Today's lecture covers the January Public Forum Resolution. The United States federal government should legalize all illicit drugs. In today's lecture, I'll look at the main terms of the resolution and how those impact your debates, as well as the pro and the con arguments. Let's start with the discussion of the terms. First, United States federal government. The United States federal government as a term is a relatively straightforward term. It really just has one meaning. It's the central government that's located in Washington, D.C. Now, there are two questions kind of related to this that the resolution does not resolve. The first, I, I think, is a minor one. It doesn't say that the drug, whether or not the drug should be legalized in the United States, though I think it's kind of fair to assume that. The United States can really legalize drugs elsewhere. But the second question, the important one that it does leave open, is whether or not this means that the, uh, you know, the pro is arguing for overriding of state laws. Like, what do I mean by this? Well, states themselves have laws that make drug use illegal, in particular drugs illegal, and establish certain penalties for both the selling drugs and consuming drugs. Um, these laws are independent of the federal uh, laws that kind of affect, that kind of are penalized drug use in some instances, and more and more more commonly, kind of uh, illegal selling of drugs. The reason this is the case is because crime control is really kind of generally an area that's left to the left to the states. Most crimes are state crimes. Most laws related to a criminal activity are at the state level. And absent the states violating constitutional rights, the federal government really doesn't have authority over state laws. But they could create like a justification uh, for kind of overriding these laws and Obviously, in order for it to kind of really legalize drugs, since most of the dr drug laws are at the state level, the federal government would have to do this, which means that they'd probably be intruding on an area of state authority. Um, and you can make an argument about federalism, or if the kind of pro says, hey, we're not arguing for that, then they're probably not really going to have much of an effect, right? Is other drugs are going to be kind of free of federal penalty, but still be penalized at the state level. So that is something... Uh, that you will need to debate out and think through. The second kind of major term in the resolution is legalize. Uh, legalize, it, it does kind of just mean there's not really going to be any penalty for the sale or use of drugs. Uh, in the literature, this is distinct from, and there is a debate within the literature, of kind of decriminalization versus legalization. Decriminalization just simply means that you don't receive, you know, states that decriminalize drug use, the drug laws remain on the books, but you don't really receive the criminal penalty, so you're not going to go to jail. Now, the problem is this does not remove the civil penalty. It would not make kind of drug distribution itself legal, so you couldn't have like companies that were like out in the open selling selling like drugs, um, you know, in kind of a way that kind of would enable regulation, which we'll talk about in a second. But legalization is definitely more than criminalization, so you have to watch kind of about what the evidence is talking about. And the third thing, which I've already alluded to, is d does drug legalization kind of include regulation? Or, you know, at least can the pro argue that leg regulation re would kind of result as, as a result of the legalization? So, for example, right, like alcohol sales are legal in the United States. We got rid of prohibition, but in most states, it's illegal for people under 21 to purchase and consume alcohol. Uh, same with tobacco, right? It's legal, uh, tobacco use is legal, but not for people over the age of 18. And of course, there's all kind of regulations associated with like what you can put in the tobacco, um, those types of things, same, same with the alcohol. So obviously regulations could solve like some of the side effects, right? Some of the worst problems of the legalization, but it, it's debatable as to whether or not legalization could include the regulation. I think the pro can at least argue that legalization or excuse me, regulation would result from the legalization. Now, the next term in the resolution is all, again, that's a straightforward term, but it means every single drug, which I think is is kind of hard to, <laughs> a little bit hard to defend, right? Uh, which we'll talk about here in a second. But basically, the pro is going to have to defend that all of these drugs should be legal. In terms of terms, right, we're next on to illicit drugs. What are they? Um, you know, it's anything that's addictive and illegal, so the illegal part we already know because we're arguing to make it legal. The addictive part, right? I mean, that's a little 
um, you know, debatable as to how actually addictive some of these drugs are. People make arguments they're not as addictive as some people seem, but a lot of these drugs are addictive and certainly bad for your health, but you know, it does include things like inhalants, right? Methadone, like synthetic marijuana, like some drugs that most people would consider dangerous. I mean, if you look at marijuana, there's a lot of states that are trying to legalize, right, at least marijuana consumption and certainly even marijuana sales in many instances, right? But I don't, I haven't seen anybody really want to legalize like inhalants um, or, or, or crystal meth or something like that. So, uh, you know, sorry to some of these things are especially like in, in a public forum debate, right? When you just have a judge who starts the debate without kind of reading a lot of the literature and their gut reaction thinking, well, gee, they're, they're really arguing that we should legalize inhalants for people to use inhalants or crystal meth or like opioids, it's kind of going to be, that's a little bit of a tough spot, not just rhetorically uh, with an average person judge, but I think even substantively uh, to defend. And again, just kind of pointing out that the resolution, it doesn't say in the United States, which I don't think is that big of a deal, but it doesn't really say for minors, right? And it doesn't explicitly address the question of regulations. So those things are going to have to get debate it out. You know, when you legalize it, does that mean for minors or just for certain people? Now, there are some key arguments for the, that the pro, you know, can help win the debate. Well, first of all, they're practical, and I'm going to talk about each of these in more detail, right? But there are practical harms to communities and individuals. There are larger kind of global harms that stem from kind of drug use being illegal in the United States, right? Just then prosecuting the drug war abroad because we know that we're not really that effective here getting people to stop using drugs. So we kind of get them to try to stop producing them or, uh, overseas and stop importing them into the United States, uh, which can create a larger global harm. And of course, also you can argue that the drug war is really just a failure. We'll talk about just kind of why it's kind of been ineffective, but also that it kind of drive because it's been ineffective, it drives kind of the production and sale of drugs underground. Uh, creating basically a black market. Now, what are the harms, right, that result to individuals? I said this is a category. I think the first category of harm within the, within the harms to individuals category is poverty. So there are some problems that result. First of all, if you, if you, you know, arrested for any type of drug use or sale, you're going to have a record, which means it's difficult as you grow older to get a job. It means that you can't access federal housing subsidies sometimes and living arrangements or access to education if you depend on government programs to gain access to that. Um, it can mean that, you know, families, when you know, if you're a, a mother or father and you're imprisoned, right, that obviously affects your kids. They don't have access to uh, their parent. And of course, our kids largely depend on their parents for kind of economic resources, which they're not going to have if they're in prison. Now, Right. And then, you know, the cities themselves, we have these rival gangs like battling with each other for drug trade that really kind of hurts the cities, turns them into war zones, decreases economic activity. And then, of course, on the flip side, which we'll talk more about in a little bit, if you legalize this, you could have some more industries and you can have some more jobs. The second category of harm to individuals, I think, is the loss of freedom. Right. You kind of lose the freedom to harm oneself. Right. Arguably that like it's up to you, you know, as an adult, whether or not you should be able to harm yourself and gain pleasure from the use of the drugs. Government can be involved in overreach, both in terms of removing kids from their parents who may be using drugs or are kind of thought to be using drugs. And as I'll talk about next, right, people are imprisoned from these uh, drug laws and the, often that kind of falls disproportionately on minorities. So what are some of this next category in terms of harms to individuals, which is racism? So I think one problem, you know, you, you, you kind of explain, and especially blacks and Hispanics, they're more likely to live in areas that are constantly surveilled uh, by the police. And therefore, they're more likely to be arrested uh, for drug use or distribution than really other, you know, other, especially like white people who are engaging in the same types of activities. Right. They're also not just more likely to be arrested, but they're more likely to be prosecuted. Prosecutors have a lot of discretion over which crimes to prosecute. Um, and we see, you know, through statistical research that crimes, especially drug crimes uh, involving blacks and Hispanics, are more likely to be prosecuted than those involving whites. They're more likely to be convicted um, if, you know, the, if it goes to trial or they're more likely to get a longer sentence as part of a plea deal. Most uh, most uh, most cases do not go to trial. Most cases are, are pled. It's over 90%, and they're more likely to get a harsher sentence as a result of that deal. 
and then get longer sentence. So you can see then too, at the individual level, this is really harmful, right? At a societal level, you know, it, it kind of leads to, uh, supports like a, an argument about systemic racism or widespread systemic racism. And of course, as I discussed previously, this kind of leads to economic deprivation on a massive scale. Then we have our harms to uh, society at a broader scale, right? It deprives us, you know, like I say, if this is legal, then you can have an industry where you have a lot of jobs and supporting jobs in industries like advertising. If we could legalize things, bring it out of the open, people got drug treatment, this could reduce addiction, um, which would mean that there are more uh, productive workers. Of course, if it was a legitimate industry, we could tax it. We'd have more resources for things like healthcare and education. And it could arguably reduce kind of the waste of police resources, both both in terms of the, the money that goes to the police. But also there's just like a lot of great evidence as like, you know, the police are so focused on combating drug crimes that a lot of other drug, a lot of other crimes tend to flourish. At a broader level, there's some additional harms to society. Uh, there's a lot of corruption, like within police departments and governments to avoid kind of uh, you know, drug dealers being cracked down on, those types of things. There's a lot of corruption. It's all a waste of money. Um, if people don't go out and seek treatment uh, for health problems because they're afraid that, you know, the hospitals or the, the clinics will find out that they're drug users, this can result in disease spread within society. And it just kind of makes it more difficult for kind of these areas of society for there to be regulation and related treatment. Now, black market I talked about earlier, but it's kind of basically the idea, right, that illicit substances, right, they're, they're, you know, because, uh, because it's not sold into the open, that what happens is that the drugs are kind of sold what you call underground in the black market, right? They're sold illegally. And often like other chemicals and very dangerous substances are put into these drugs, which can increase addiction and even further threaten the health. And of course you have, you know, you have violence from the corruption some of the money goes to use to fund terrorism, the drug lords, so to speak, right, are gaining all these profits. <coughs> Local gangs that are involved in running of the drugs are kind of fighting over territory and sales. So it creates like a lot of a lot of problems kind of beyond kind of the consumption, right? And one particular problem is heroin, right? People still use heroin even though it's illegal, but because it's harder to get because it's illegal, they want like more of the substance in their body, right? So they they inject the heroin. Um, and of course, that, that's more dangerous. And they also can't use clean needles uh, because, you know, they don't want to be using clean needles out in the open where they could get arrested for maybe drug using more uh, heroin, which spreads disease. Um, so it's just a lot more violence, corruption, health problems from all this being driven underground. Now, if just a small, was, a small amount was driven underground, and the drug war is, was largely effective, that would be a, a different situation as well. But we know that it, arguably the drug war is not really reducing drug use at all. We've had 50 years at least of the war on drugs, and really people say no solvency. I mean, it's hard to compare to like what might otherwise have happened, um, but at least we don't see any decrease in drug use from when the drug war started. And arguably it even increases crime and violence because since you know the drug war tries to limit supply, that means the price increases. And once the price increases, people are kind of fighting over, right? Like what people are fighting over the drugs themselves, right? Like the more people want to get involved in the drug trade, it becomes violent. Um, they try to make profits. It just, it kind of makes the situation worse. And it creates, of course, what we know is a forbidden fruit, right? Especially with kids, right? When you're a kid, you want to be able to do stuff that you're not supposed to be able to do. So the fact that it's illegal could even make this situation worse. Beyond the harms in the United States, which I think most of the debates will kind of end up getting focused on in, in a public forum debate, there are harms that kind of associated uh, internationally. As I said earlier, we want to prosecute the, the war on drugs, not just in the United States, but we realize that fails, so we try to prosecute it abroad by trying to decrease the production of drugs abroad and the importation of those drugs to the United States. Uh, there are what you call abroad, of course, drug cartels, which I know, right, you've heard of in a broad sense, right? They try to make money supplying illegal drugs, and they're, they're engaging in a lot of violence, right? Um, there's a lot of, you know, they, they kind of force people, and a couple, a couple ways this violence happens, right? They force local people into the drug, raid, drug trade to help grow drugs. If they don't, they, like, threaten violence against their families and often uh, kill family members. 
Um, they're killing people on. They're, they're killing rival drug members uh, from other other cartels. Um, so you know they're they're kill, they're killing police who are trying to like prevent the trade. So there's a lot of violence and then kind of associated government corruption where they try to like pay off government officials. This money can be used to fund terrorism. Some terrorists are directly involved in the drug trade. In order to make money, you can look at specific examples in, in Venezuela where some of the money is going to support the, uh, the government. So most people consider the war on drugs abroad to be very, very bad, to be like a net negative, to be like incredibly violent. And of course, this would not happen if drugs are not illegal in the United States, because it's really the United States that's legal, that's kind of leading the prosecution of this drug war, right? It also kind of supports kind of our foreign military intervention, which increases more violence and anti-Americanism. It kind of forces kind of producers into danger, like kind of unconventional areas, such as the rainforest, which results in kind of important environment, environmental uh, environmental harms at a broader level, why the rainforest is important, but also just kind of denies people living opportunities. Now, counter plans in public forum debate are still kind of, quote, illegal, uh, just like the drugs. Um, but, you know, we have had a little more counter planning in public forum debate. Sometimes it's a little bit explicit. Other times it's just teams are suggesting alternatives that could kind of be emerging. So one emerging alternative that we see in certain states is decriminalization. Uh, as I explained earlier, there is a difference between decriminalization and legalization. Decriminalization it's just when you say that there are no more criminal penalties for drug use. Um, but those laws stay in the books. They're still illegal. So some people might argue for decriminalization instead of legalization. But look, it, it, if you just have decriminalization, it's not legal for companies to produce the drug. It's still not legal for companies to produce the drugs. And they're not just going to hope they don't get criminally prosecuted, right? So. They're not going to produce drugs that are safer, that have like, you know, that have those, that don't have those dangerous substances that are also often included in the black market drugs. If we legalize, then we could have more safe re regulation, either, like I say, as a part of the, as a part of the legalization or resulting from it. Um, you would also have less kind of enforcement from child protective services, right? And if you don't have kind of complete regulation, you just have decriminalization in the United States you're going to still have the drug war operating abroad. Whereas if the United States program were to completely legalize all drugs, it arguably would have no reason to continue the drug war. Now, you could debate that a little bit. You could say, well, we would still try to stop these dangerous drugs, illegal drugs, from getting into the United States. Most people think we would give up the drug war abroad. A second potential alternative is to just say, hey, like the state, the state should get in, or the state should legalize this. And in policy debate, Lincoln-Douglas debate, this would really present it as a state's counter plan. Like I said, that's hard to do uh, in even modern public forum debate unless you can do it. But there is some propensity, right, for the states to act. So the states could come about and the states could say, hey, you know, the, the neg or the, excuse me, the con could say, look, the states are moving to legalize drugs. Why get the federal government involved? Well, if you just had the states, people would still fear prosecution from the federal government. Um, there would still not be possible for cross-border regulations on the sale of drugs um, that would happen under a, a kind of a legalized framework. And of course, then you can debate like apps in the counter plan, whether or not the states would actually do this. There's like kind of good evidence that says that the states would not just kind of go on and continue, like, you know, are not going to legalize drugs. I mean, most states are not trying to legalize drugs. I think a number of states that already legalized, made abortion illegal, Right, it's like 20 and case Roe v. Wade is overturned. We haven't any anything similar to that at all at the state level and in, in terms of legalizing drugs, especially all drugs, right? There may be more to probably sign some evidence in 10 or 12 states. I don't know, I'm just making that up, but a number of states have moved to mar legalize marijuana to some degree, but they're not moving to uh, legalize, legalize all drugs. Now, how is the affirmative? So we kind of talked about how the affirmative the pro can answer some of these kind of common like alternatives arguments, but what about just kind of some conventional arguments? How are they going to answer addiction and overdose? And I do want to kind of just start by saying those are those are different things. They're related, right? If you are addicted, you're more likely to overdose. But addiction refers to like, hey, I just really need this drug like every day or every so often, right? In order to not feel terrible. Overdose means I've taken like too much of the drug, right? 
So I could not be addicted and on any given day, like consume like too much of a too much of a drug. Um, and, you know, there is a debate, right, about how legalization can address each of those, but they are kind of kind of related to one another to a degree, right? To the extent that you're addicted, you're more likely to overdose. So kind of talk just generally about how to answer them, but you should also might want to answer them separately in the debate. The first remember is that black market means more like illicit substances are added, like more dangerous substances are added to these drugs, which in, in, in some instances can make them more addictive, but also more dangerous, right? In the sense that you're more likely to over overdose. Second, a lack of legalization means people are afraid to go uh, to go get treatment for this drug use, right? They don't want to go seek treatment because they're engaging in illegal behavior. The third, if we if we could legalize methadone, there would be more. That's a way to treat uh, kind of drug overdoses that would be more available and more likely to deal with a problem. The fourth is that even though there's a lot of stories in the media about this, there's kind of some good evidence that says it's pretty rare. Fifth, as just discussed, prohibition doesn't really kind of stop people from using these drugs, so it's not really that helpful. We could have regulation, right, to make sure the drugs that are sold are safe. It's kind of like, uh, you know, just kind of the flip side of number one. Um, and that right now we're spending all this money on the drug war, where we should really be spending it to help people. In terms of kind of how to answer the crime argument, I already talked about these, right? It wastes a lot of money and police power that could be devoted to other crimes. And you could really talk about, read some impacts, other, other crimes are really worse, right? They cause more poverty in areas. They're like more disruptive. They're like more violent. Uh, it's a bad use of police resources. And also that kind of the illegal drug trade itself is violent, right? Um, and that causes a lot of, uh, causes a lot, a lot of violence and death in and of itself. Now, opioids, of course, are in the news a lot, right? How are we gonna deal kind of with the problem of o opioids? addiction. Well, first of all, you can argue, look, the drugs are illegal now and there's a lot of opioid addiction. Second, there's evidence that says marijuana painkillers are better than opioids. And if we had always allowed marijuana-based painkillers, we wouldn't be in this position. And third, if you make it legal, then more people will be willing to come forward for treatment. And we currently waste a lot of resources in the war on drugs. And I think this is also kind of an excellent way to kind of bring up the questions of regulation. Okay, like, just because drugs are legal doesn't mean like anyone's going to be able to get an opioid uh, whenever they want. Maybe <laughs> maybe it does that, but it's probably going to be regulated the same way any any kind of drug uh, is regulated. Fentanyl is a is a big is a big problem, right? So what are we arguing for legalizing fentanyl? Remember, fentanyl gets added to drugs now. The status quo fails, and drugs that are sold illegally probably more likely to contain fentanyl because of what it does. Fentanyl. Uh, kind of provides some of what the, the drug would normally provide in terms of the experience for the user, but it's much more dangerous. So I think the pro wants to really kind of look very directly at kind of the black market, like how bad the, you know, hey, the drug war fails, that's defensive, but it creates this really dangerous black market, which creates all the problems that you're talking about on the con, just worse that we can actually solve some opioid addiction, which is the common thing now people think about as a problem with drugs, and that the legalization itself is gonna include some regulation or at least lead to regulation, which will solve the harms that you're talking about. The con, the con, even though societal attitudes are generally kind of in favor of the war on drugs, or at least people don't think that like drugs should be legalized, it is difficult. Um, it is, it is difficult just because it, it's really hard to win that the drug war is like very effective, that it really accomplishes much of anything. Um, so I think you do need to acknowledge this going into it, going into your research, going into looking at our evidence packet or other companies' evidence packets that this is kind of a tough debate on the con. It may surprise you a little bit um, that a lot of the, the research is kind of for the uh, for the affirmative, but if you can kind of cast doubt on their claims like okay Like how much is like better is treatment going to be like how much will drug use really decline? Like how much you're going to solve the violence problems? Right then there are going to be fewer issues and I think you want to argue against the absurdity Right rhetorically it is powerful and like I say that it does subsequently make sense that all drugs should probably not be legal There are very few people there are a couple that defend such an extreme approach and then I think you can kind of couple it with a couple with a few arguments. Not I, I wouldn't use all of these, right? You can think of kind of your judges and those types of things and what interests you. 
that are kind of independent of how much like legalization, right? There's this category of arguments that like legal is it, I'm going to talk about more detail in a second. Legalization is harmful to individuals and kind of society. But then there are kind of broader problems related to having the federal government like legalize the drugs, right? So there's like I say federalism that may usurp power from the states. Um, this would probably decimate. I mean, it's already looking pretty rough for the Democrats in the midterms elections. Right now, the Democrats obviously control the House, the Senate, and the presidency. If the government legalized drugs now, I, I can pretty much guarantee you that there would be probably GOP control of the Senate and the House, which you could argue is bad. And this could violate, this potentially violates a number of international treaties that we have that are designed to kind of curtail the amount of drugs, the drugs that are present. So if we want to go, right, look at the heart of the society, like I said, it's going to toot the, the Democrats. If the Democrats don't regain control, the January 6th investigation will go away because the Republicans will get rid of it. There's some evidence that says Democrats are more likely to have progressive social policies that are more effective. The trick to winning this argument will be that the Democrats are going to win at least control of one branch um, in the status quo. It's probably more feasible to argue or that they're going to still maintain control of the Senate than the House. Um, but it's an argument that you can make. Federalism I talked about, right? Crime is an area of state control. Federal, the United States is a federalist system, which is designed so one level of government doesn't get too much power over another. So you could argue this removes a core uh, component of state authority, which is effective. The treaties argument, okay, says that legalization is inconsistent with a number of treaties and that we should follow international law and international norms broadly in order to maintain cooperation with others um, as well. Now, there are, right, you can, of course, on the con, right, so these are all arguments, I should mention, where the link is really strong. What do I mean by that? Like, yes, if the U.S. government legalized drugs, that would hurt a bunch of politicians. Um, it would be an intrusion on state power, and it would disrupt treaties. Those are a little vaguer arguments, which are probably sometimes harder to win in public forum debate, though they work in other formats of debate. But the link to those is clear. It only goes in one direction. There's no evidence that says, like, legalizing drugs is going to, like, help the Democrats retain power, or that it would, like, empower the states. For the, you know, the federal government did this, or it would lead to more supportive treaties. Those links only go in one direction. Um, it's just like kind of you have to get in PF to a little more nebulous of an impact, which is kind of more difficult. But there are then I'm saying if you use that as kind of like part of your strategy and then say, hey, like what the what the a pro is arguing for, you know, reducing this black market, getting kind of the like drug use more regulated, getting more people to treatment. It's not going to like turn out as well as they think. It, they might make the problem worse, but even if they don't, there's a chance they're going to make the problem worse. And then you could have these, you know, so you should avoid that for these other reasons. So the first one is use, right? You can't argue that drug use is going to increase. The current penalties deter people from using drugs. The, the price now is kind of high, as I said, right? Because the trade is illegal, right? Which <laughs> right makes it dangerous. It means that people aren't going to do it if they make high profits. If, the, if legal is it, you have more legalization and the price goes down, use is going to increase. You can argue that even just if people start using one drug, they're going to get addicted to others. And that legal drugs might be even more potent, that they might put substances in these to make them even more potent. That we could put marijuana in a lot of things, which is going to increase use. Maybe like marijuana go in chocolate or like pasta sauce, right? So we're going to kind of have marijuana everywhere. Um, if you make drugs illegal here and they're not elsewhere, you might have people coming to the United States just to kind of use drugs. Or it's like one of the primary highlights of like their vacation, which kind of increased drug use and consumption worldwide. And of course, if it's legal, then there's kind of less of a social disapproval to using it. If crime could result from increased use and, you know, just some evidence that it empirically does, that there is kind of more drug use as a result of this. You could argue that you know, reducing the price of opioids is going to increase use and we're going to fail to regulate this. How are you going to deal with this strong black market argument? Well, you could argue that it's kind of tricky, right, for the pro, because the pro is going to want to maintain things like regulation, right? The pro is going to want to sit and try to argue, well, gee, if we legalize drugs, there'll still be regulations, either directly included with legalization or as a result of that. Well, the stronger the regulation and more effective it is, 
the stronger the black market's going to be, right? Because the people want going to want to get around the the going to get along around the regulation, and you know maybe they will want these more potent drugs. So I just think that like you know this is kind of an area where you can do um, <laughs> where there's some potential. But I think in terms of strategy, right? I think I'd really look at the pro and say, hey, the war on drugs is a total failure. It drives it underground. It creates this dangerous black market, which increases use and all these problems. And then second, it causes all these problems in the communities related to poverty and related to racism. On the con, I'd say like, hey, you can't really solve the black market for the reasons I identified. There could be some increased use and increased addiction. You're going to make this huge change, which is really probably not going to accomplish anything. It may make the problem worse. And hey, look, and then you know, why would you disrupt the federal state balance of power or risk the Democrats maybe maintaining control of the Senate, right, or the um, or disrupting international treaties?